this is the only the third time we've ever seen an interstellar object. And interstellar doesn't just mean Matthew McConaughey. It means something not from our solar system. It's interstellar. It's between suns. On October 29th, 2025, something extraordinary happened in our solar system. And for a brief window of time, the most powerful telescopes on Earth were completely blind. 3i Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object ever detected, reached perihelion, its closest approach to the Sun, diving to a distance of about 203 million kilometers. That's roughly between the orbits of Earth and Mars, close enough that the Sun's gravity becomes a kind of cosmic engine. At that range, even the smallest push, the tiniest acceleration or deceleration, can dramatically alter an object's path forever. That's why engineers use the sun's gravity for something called an Oberth maneuver, a real and well-documented effect in orbital mechanics. It's how spacecraft like the Parker Solar Probe and Voyager missions gain huge speed boosts using planetary or solar gravity wells. A brief burst of thrust at the point of maximum speed can change a trajectory more efficiently than at any other time. And this is exactly the kind of window that Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, the former head of Harvard's astronomy department, has discussed in his peer-reviewed work. He proposed that if an artificial interstellar probe were ever to exist, it could release smaller devices during a close pass near a star, using gravity as a launch amplifier. That's not science fiction. It's orbital physics applied to an unfamiliar context, so when 3i Atlas reached perihelion, scientists knew one of two things would happen. Possibility A. It behaves like a natural interstellar comet, a large fragment of rock and volatile ice from another star system. As it heats up, jets of gas escape, causing small, random pushes that we can model and measure. It brightens as sunlight reflects off its coma, then fades as it leaves the sun's influence. Or possibility B. It doesn't behave like that at all. It performs a precise change in trajectory, one that can't be explained by natural forces like outgassing or radiation pressure. If that happened, it wouldn't just be a curiosity. It would mean something, or someone, used the sun's gravity as a slingshot, just as human spacecraft do when navigating the outer planets. For now, all we know is that at perihelion, 3i Atlas became unobservable. The sun's glare, made it invisible to both optical and infrared telescopes. That means for several critical days, perhaps the most important days of its entire passage, no one could see what it was doing. It was literally hidden by the sun itself. When it emerges from that blinding region, scientists will compare its predicted orbit, the mathematical model, to its actual position. If the two match perfectly, the object remains a natural interstellar visitor. If they differ, even by a small amount, it could indicate an unknown force acted on it, something beyond our current explanation. Now, hear what makes 3i Atlas different from anything we've seen before. Its inclination, the angle at which it entered our solar system, is almost perfectly aligned with the ecliptic plane, the same plane where all of our planets orbit. That's extremely rare. Most interstellar objects, like 1 Ice Taumuamua or 2 Ice Borisov, approach from random directions, tilted steeply relative to the planetary plane. 3i Atlas, however, came in along our system's natural orbital disk, almost as if it had chosen a route that maximized observation potential. Now, that's not proof of anything unnatural, but it is unusual. And in astronomy, unusual is where new discoveries begin. The object's mass also defies easy comparison. Based on its brightness and the extent of its coma, estimates place its diameter somewhere between 500 meters and several kilometers, though some models suggest it could be far larger. That's hundreds of times more massive than 2 Borisov, and possibly millions of times more massive than Taumuamua. If it's natural, it's the largest interstellar object ever observed. That alone makes it scientifically priceless. Let's take a step back and explain what interstellar actually means. It means this object is not bound to the sun's gravity. It's not orbiting like a planet or asteroid. Its orbital eccentricity, a measure of how stretched its path is, is greater than one. That means it's on a hyperbolic trajectory. It entered our system once and it will leave forever. 
It came from another star. We don't know which, and once it exits, it will continue into the dark between solar systems for possibly millions of years. So the question becomes, what can we learn before it's gone? Astronomers are now analyzing the chemical fingerprint of its coma, the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the nucleus. Preliminary data from the James Webb Space Telescope and Very Large Telescope in Chile suggest the coma is unusually rich in carbon dioxide, far higher than in most known comets. In our solar system, water vapor usually dominates when comets heat up near the sun, but 3I Atlas appears to be dry ice rich, meaning it likely formed in a much colder, more distant environment, perhaps far beyond the frost line of its original star system. That's solid science. It tells us this object carries chemical clues about how other planetary systems form, potentially in conditions completely different from ours. Now let's talk about the speculative edge, but in a way that's honest and data-driven. Some researchers, including Avi Loeb, have suggested that interstellar objects like Taumuamua or 3I Atlas could be artificial probes. That doesn't mean alien spacecraft in the Hollywood sense. It means they might be technological relics, objects constructed by another civilization, perhaps long dead, drifting between stars. That hypothesis isn't proof. It's a framework for testing. If something moves in a way that violates known physics or displays energy output inconsistent with a natural body, we ask, is there an alternative explanation? So far, everything about 3i Atlas could still fit natural models. But the scientific process requires testing both sides. For example, if the object performs an Oberth-like acceleration, suddenly changing course while hidden behind the sun, that would be measurable once it reappears. Telescopes like Hubble and Gaia will immediately begin comparing its outbound velocity with projections from before perihelion. If the two don't match, that's evidence of an unknown force. This leads to another uncomfortable truth. Our current observational infrastructure isn't designed to track interstellar visitors in real time. Ground-based telescopes can't see near the sun. Radar systems can't reach that far. We have no dedicated solar side observatory capable of continuous tracking at that angle. For several weeks, 3I Atlas has been essentially unmonitored and that's a vulnerability the astronomical community has been warning about for years. If its trajectory did change during that time, we won't know until it's already hundreds of millions of kilometers past the sun. That delay could mean millions of kilometers of untracked motion. If, in a purely hypothetical case, the object's path were deflected even slightly toward Earth's orbital region, international agencies like NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office ESA's Space Safety Program, and CNSA's Deep Space Observation Network would initiate coordinated tracking campaigns. But so far, there's no evidence of danger, and scientists are very clear about that. Still, the episode reveals a gap in readiness. We're excellent at tracking near-Earth asteroids, not interstellar ones traveling at 60 kilometers per second on hyperbolic escape routes. Now let's address the word that captures everyone's imagination, mothership. Loeb's mothership hypothesis doesn't mean a piloted craft. In his published papers, he proposes that if interstellar civilizations exist, they might use small, durable devices, probes the size of cars or even pebbles, to study planets like ours. These could be ejected by larger carriers, using gravitational slingshots, exactly as humans do with spacecraft. It's an academic exercise, a way of broadening how we think about search strategies for extraterrestrial technology, also known as SETI-2. Whether 3I Atlas fits that idea remains entirely unproven. But the reason serious scientists even discuss it is because Taumuamua, the first interstellar object, already broke so many rules. It accelerated without outgassing, had a non-rotational light curve, and reflected sunlight in a way inconsistent with any known comet or asteroid. When the same pattern begins to repeat, good science asks why, not if. So what happens next? Over the coming months, astronomers worldwide will reacquire 3I Atlas as it emerges from solar conjunction. Using precise astrometry, 
they'll determine whether its outbound speed and direction match predictions. If everything aligns, it's a natural comet, and the data adds another puzzle piece to our understanding of interstellar chemistry. If the numbers don't align, even by a fraction, the conversation changes. Either scenario teaches us something profound. A natural object this large tells us the galaxy is full of planetary debris, fragments of long-dead worlds still wandering the stars. An unnatural one, if ever confirmed, would mean we are not the first to engineer interstellar travel. But the biggest truth is simpler, and perhaps more humbling. We're still almost blind beyond our own orbit. We've had only three confirmed interstellar visitors in all of human history. Each one appeared suddenly, stayed for months, then vanished back into the dark. We never knew they were coming, and we still don't fully understand what they were. 3 I Atlas, whatever it turns out to be, is a reminder of how little we know about the space between stars. It doesn't need to be alien to be extraordinary. It is, without question, one of the rarest and most mysterious objects ever observed, and the best evidence yet that our solar system is not isolated, but open. So as it fades beyond the sun and into interstellar night, the real question isn't just what 3 I Atlas is, it's what else might be following it. Because for the first time, we're realizing that visitors from other stars might not be once-in-a-lifetime events. They could be the start of a new era, one where we finally begin to see the galaxy not as distant, but connected. And that, no matter what it turns out to be, comet, relic, or probe, is already a revolution in how we see our place in the universe.